Hi, this is Munson from Munson Music, and we're talking about how you can play a song called Home from the Last of Us soundtrack. And it starts with kind of just uh, some ambient uh, notes in the background, and you can kind of simulate that on the guitar by playing third fret on the low E string for a G note, and then open E for an open E or an E note, and then going to second fret on the low E string for kind of an F sharp note. So we're going G, E, and then F sharp. And if you wanted to kind of make that a little bit thicker, you'd actually add some things called power chords. And what a power chord is, is where you're playing the root and the fifth of a chord. So for the G note, if you counted up five notes on your fingers, G, A, B, C, D is what's called the fifth. So you could play the first finger on the low E on the third fret and take the third finger and go to the A string on the fifth fret for a D note and kind of make that a little bit thicker. And if you want to make the E a little bit thicker, you can actually do that same kind of thing by taking the first finger and going to the A string on the second fret and kind of playing the open E and the A string together. And I'm kind of doing that as kind of a thumb strong thing. And then from there, for the F sharp note, when we go to second fret on the low E string, you can take the third finger and kind of add it in on the A string on the fourth fret, and that's called F sharp five. So you can kind of back that up by going G5, E5, F sharp five. And then there's this cool little ambient note that kind of comes in like a guitar with distortion that's around a C sharp note, or you could even work it as kind of a B note to a C sharp note. And there are a couple ways you could do that actually. One way is to kind of take the open B string and kind of do it as a hammer on the second fret on, on the B string. And then try and do like a lot of little teeny bends, to kind of doing vibrato actually to try and get that note to sustain. I don't know, that, that can be kind of tricky. Another way to do it would be going to 12th fret on the B string and kind of doing that as a slide to 14th fret and kind of trying to do the vibrato to keep that note going. Or you could even add, add in more notes if you wanted to kind of keep it going. You could actually kind of, kind of do it even that way kind of just add in more, more notes on that C sharp note. And then we come in on a B note and then you could play this A string on the second fret. Or if you wanted to kind of make that a little bit thicker, you could add a B5 power chord by taking the third finger and going to the D string on the fourth fret and kind of strumming those two strings. So the A and the D string on the, on the A string on the second, third, and the third finger on the D string fourth fret for a B5 power chord. And then that same kind of ambient sound kind of comes in on a B note. So you could kind of take the G string on the fourth fret and kind of get a B note and kind of do that as, as kind of a, a vibrato idea. Or you could even go to the B string on the twelfth fret and kind of use that, that B note if you wanted to. And you can even play it extra times if you wanted to. And then after that, kind of our, our main theme introduction actually kind of comes in actually, where we go to, to fourth fret on the D string, and then we play open B string, and then we got third on the B string, and then open E, and then second fret on the high E string, and then third fret on the B string, and then open B, and then back to third fret on the B, open E, second fret on the high E string, third fret on the B string, open B, and then open B, and then third fret on the B string, and then open E. Oh, wait, wait I forgot a four. <laughs> So right after those ambient sounds, actually, we kind of go into our, our what becomes our, our main theme or part of our main theme, where we go to fourth fret on the D string, kind of lead off, kind of, so kind of starting on the F sharp right there, and then we go to open B, and then third fret on the B string, open E, second fret on the high E string, third fret on the B string, and then open B, and then we go back to that third fret on the B string, open E, second fret on the high E string, third fret on the B string, and then open B. And then we go back to the fourth fret on the D string to kind of almost start that over again, where we got that B, D, E, F sharp, D, B, D, E, F sharp, D, B, and then four on the D string for that sharp, open B. And at the very end of that, we kind of play fourth fret on the D string, and then we go to third fret on the G string. So the notes are actually kind of playing through that main theme. We've got B, D, E, F sharp, D, B, D, E, F sharp, D, B, F sharp, B, D, E, F sharp, D, B, D, E, F sharp, D, B, F sharp, B, F sharp, A sharp. And if you wanted to, most of that theme actually is kind of backed up with kind of an ambient B note in, in the background, which you could play on the A string on the second fret to kind of imply a B minor chord. And then when we get to that F sharp note at the very, or the A sharp note at the very, very end, that would kind of imply an F sharp chord. So you could kind of throw in that low E on the second fret F sharp note to kind of imply that. So if you wanted to, you could kind of throw in some basses. So you could do second on the, o or second on the A string with the open B. 
and then third on the B, open E, second on the high E with the second fret on the A string, and then third on the B, open B, and then third on the B, open E, and then second fret on the high E with the, with the second on the A string, three O, and then four on the D string, and then two and open together, three O, two and two, three O, three O, two and two, three O, four, two and open, and then four, two and three together. So if you wanted to, you can kind of play around with that. And then actually right after that, we, we almost end up with kind of that theme coming back, but kind of embellished actually. So it's kind of like a, a main theme embellishment. But the coolest part here actually is, is the arpeggios that are kind of happening around a B minor chord. And the way you play B minor, first finger goes across the entire second fret, second finger on the B string on the third fret, third finger on the D string on the fourth fret, and the pinky on the G string on the fourth fret. And if you kind of take the fingers and kind of use the thumb for your A string, index finger for the D, middle finger for the G string, and the ring finger for, for the B string, you could kind of just do kind of a thumb index middle ring idea on those, those four strings, on those middle four strings around the B minor. And then kind of come back index middle ring. That part's kind of faint in the recording. So you got B minor with thumb, index, middle, ring, index, middle, ring, thumb, index, middle, ring, thumb, index, middle, ring. And then right after that we go to a B minor 7 chord and all you really have to do from where you are with the bar is to lift off the, the pinky. And, and if you kind of do that then you kind of have your B minor 7 chord. So it's kind of, this whole next section actually is kind of backed up with those arpeggios actually kind of breaking up the chord. So we got B minor, thumb, index, middle, ring, index, middle, ring, B minor 7. And then, uh, and then B minor 7. So it's kind of cool like how, how those arpeggios actually kind of get used through most of that, that section until we get to kind of, kind of a development thing later on. And the melody part through that part, you have open B, and then second fret on the G string, and then kind of holding on to that for quite a while. And, and then we'd be going open B again, and then we'd be going back to the second fret on the G string. And those notes are kind of part of the chord, actually. We're kind of playing a, a B note on the G string, fourth fret for the B minor. And when you lift off that pinky, we're kind of playing the, the A note that's actually kind of part of the melody. So that melody's almost kind of coming through with just the arpeggios, actually. After kind of what we have that, that B and the A, then right after that we kind of have this cool little, little B note actually where we kind of take fourth fret on the G string and do, and do a, a bend on it. And it's a really cool bend actually in the recording where you kind of go four bend. And then the main theme kind of that we talked about kind of comes back in where you've got third on the B string, open E, and then second fret on the high E string, third on the B, open B, and then third on the B, open E. Second fret on the high E string, and then third fret on the B string, open B, and then four on the D string, and then open B. It's almost like a, a theme return. And if you wanted to, you could kind of back that up with the bass notes where you have the tune open, two and two, or actually that fourth fret on the G string is the same thing as open B. So you could do two and four, two and four, two and two, two and two. Two and four, and then three o oh, two and two three o oh, three o oh, two and two three o oh, four two and open. Now, if you're a little bit more adventurous, though, actually, you could try and work those melody notes around the arpeggio, and this could be kind of tricky. So you may have to play around with kind of lifting off the bar to get the open B string, and then kind of that two with the B minor seven to kind of accent that part. So this could be kind of tricky, kind of, or even even just G string accents. Actually, that, that would work too.
kind of tricky to try and take those parts and kind of put them together, but that might be something you want to kind of experiment with. And then from there, we go into kind of a development section where we start with the open B, and then we kind of do a, a little pieces of our main theme where we got that D, E, F sharp, D, B, D, E, F sharp, D, B, F sharp, B, and then the A sharp. But through that part, our basses start moving actually, and it kind of starts on a B minor. But then we kind of have a B minor with an A in the bass, or B minor slash A, where you can kind of take off the first finger from, from the bar and go first finger on the high E string on the second fret, and kind of strum just the A string and the high E string for a B minor slash A, or B minor with an A in the bass. Because the arpeggio is still going at that same time. And then from there we'd be going to a G major chord. And when we play G major, first finger is going to go to the A string on the second fret, second finger on the low E string on the third fret, and the third finger on the high E string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord. And then from the G major we go to an E minor chord. And when we play E minor, first finger goes to the A string second, second finger on the D string second. And that sounds an E minor chord and it sounds really, really sad. And then from the E minor we go to a G major again. And then from the G major we go to an F sharp major. And when you play F sharp major, first finger goes across the entire second fret, just like the B minor. And then second finger goes to the G string on the second fret, third finger on the A string on the fourth fret, and the pinky on the D string on the fourth fret. And if you show all those, that sounds like F sharp major. So almost everything up at this point has actually just been B minor, but just when, when we get to this development section, you kind of get have the B minor slash A, G major. E minor, G major, F sharp major. But if you wanted to, you could kind of just play the bass notes kind of for those chords to kind of imply them. So you could have the open A with the open B, and then three open, and then three on the low E string for the second fret on the high E string, and then the three O, three O open E with the second fret on the high string, three O. Four on the D string, three on the low E string with open B, and then two on the low E string for the third fret on the G string. So you can kind of make a little two part out of that. Um, if you wanted to, you could try and work those around the arpeggios too. You have the B minor, three O, oh, and then two and three, and then the E minor. pieces of the chord actually to kind of simulate that with the recording so it's just an idea you might want to play around with. So from there we go into kind of a little development where we play open B and then second fret on, on the G string or digression actually might be a better name, name for this section and then we go to third fret on the B string and then an open B string and then there's this big chord roll actually on a C major chord and when you play C major First finger goes to the B string on the first fret, second finger on the D string on the second fret, and third finger on the A string on the third fret. And if you kind of strum the A string, the high E string, that'll get you a C major chord. So it's a really big push on the C chord. And then there's this cool little piano part, or at least it sounds like a piano part, where you play second on the, on the D and then open G, fourth fret on the D string, and then you'd be back into kind of that B minor with, with just the two and open. And then we got another big C push, and then two on the D, open G, four on the D, and then we play open D, and you can do that with that second fret on the A string to kind of back it up with the B minor. And then there's this cool little, little, little uh, lick around an A major chord, and when you play A major, first finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret, second finger on the G string on the second fret, and third finger on the B string on the second fret, and if you strum all those together, that sounds an A major. Now, what's a little weird about this lick, though, is you actually start on an A sus2, where you'd actually kind of lift off the third finger of the A major for just the first finger and the second finger on the D and the, and the G. And you kind of play the open A, second on the D, second on the G, and then when you get to the B string, you kind of do that as an open hammer on the second pull off. So we're going, oh, hammering on a, with enough force to kind of get the, the, pressure, the sound to carry the second fret, and then letting the finger kind of fall straight towards the floor to get the sound to carry back to the open string. And then we got an open G and then a fourth fret on the B string. And then we end that section actually with just an open B note, but it gets backed up with, with a low E bass. So it's almost kind of like a G chord. So two parts through that, you'd have two, you'd have two and open, two and two, two and three, two and open, and then C chord, two, oh, four, two and open, C chord, two. O four two open and then the A with the O two two O two O O four and then three 
young Louis with open B. And then from there, there's kind of a, a theme return where we're back to kind of that open B, open B. And then O, oh, three, O, oh, two, three, O, oh, three, O, oh, two, three, O, oh, four, O. Oh. And then at the very end, we kind of have that four, three on the G string kind of idea coming back. So we tried that as a two part. The two part, then we have two on the A string with the open B, two and open, two and open, and that three, O, oh, two, and two, three, O. Oh. Three O oh, two and two three O oh. four on the D string two and open four on the D string and then the two and three and if you wanted to you could kind of try that idea where we're kind of working around the arpeggio it's kind of trying to get the B note in the arpeggio and then B minor three O oh, B minor three O oh, three O oh, B minor two O oh, oh. four B minor. getting our arpeggios around those notes the weird part is like how much time you've got on the B minor before you've got to jump in the melody so you have B minor with, with, with a B note B minor with a B note B minor with a B note 3 O B minor with a high E string note 3 O just the dynamic of how much time you've got actually uh, before you got to jump out because we're trying to cover two guitar parts with one guitar which is kind of a weird thing but to take it from the very very beginning and kind of recap everything we're talking about we start off with those intro notes where we got the G5 E5 F sharp 5 and then we got that B C sharp note or B C sharp note that gets sustained and then we got the B5 our B note, or our B note, kind of doing the vibrato with the sustain, and then we've got our first introduction of the main theme, where we got that two and open, three o oh, two two three o, oh, three o oh, two two three o, oh, four two and open, three o oh, two two three o, oh, three o oh, two two three o, oh, four two and open, four three and two. And then we go into our arpeggios, actually, kind of for, for our, 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 uh, our, 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 <laughs> and then we'd be going into those arpeggios. So we'd have the B minor, B minor seven, B minor, B minor seven, or if you're kind of working just the melody notes, we'd have that open two or fourth fret on the G string, same note. on the fourth fret on the G string. And then three O oh, two three O oh, three O oh, two three O oh, four O. Oh. Or if we're trying that as kind of a two part, then we had to have that, that two and open, two and two. Or you could be doing that two and four, two and four, two and two, two and two. And then two and four with the cool band. Three oh two two three oh. Three oh two two three oh. Four two and open. Or if you're kind of trying that, kind of getting those melody notes in, then you got kind of that B minor with the B note. B minor with the A note. B minor with the A B note. B minor with the B note. B minor seven with the A note. experiment with, with all, all three of those ways actually and then from there we go into kind of our development section where we kind of got that B minor B minor slash A G B e minor and then G F sharp and if we're doing that as a two part 
part or, or we have the open open. Three O oh, three two three O oh, three O oh, two and O oh, three O oh, four three and open and the two and three. Or if we're kind of trying to get those notes in with the arpeggios, we have the B minor so or B minor slash A. Three O oh, G with the two. finger kind of kind of work for you to kind of try and get those melody notes together and on that part actually a lot of times I'm doing thumb ring actually and then kind of filling in the index middle so P and A, I am A, I am A is kind of the idea there and then we'd be going kind of into, into our digression part where we got that open B to third fret on the B string open B and then the C chord to O Kind of trying that with the arpeggios. If we have the B minor with the B note, B minor with an A note, B minor with a B note, and then or D note, B note, C chord two, O four, B minor arpeggio, C chord two, O four, B minor arpeggio. And then we kind of be back into kind of our main theme return. So if we tried that as a two part, we'd have the two and open, two and open, two and open, three oh, two and two, three oh, three oh, two and two, three oh, four oh, four, two and three. Or if you're kind of trying those arpeggios around it, you got B minor with a B note, B minor with a B note. Of the B note, three O oh, B with a high string note, and then three two, three O oh, high string, four B minor, F sharp. So the tricky part is trying to figure out how you're going to kind of try and get in those melody notes with the the arpeggios. But that's the basics of how you can kind of finger style through home from the Last of Us soundtrack by Gustavo. So good luck.